Whether you're searching in the library system for the very first time, or you want to make sure you're getting the most out of your search, you've come to the right place. This video will tell you all about the library's main search feature, our discovery service. On the Morris Library website, which you can find at kellogg.edu slash library. We've tried to make it so that the things students are looking for are as easy to locate as possible. So we know that most of the time when you're visiting the library website, you're going to be looking for sources to use. And so we've made the main way you can do that, our discovery service, as prominent as we could. It's this big orange search box right at the top. So what this does is allows you to search all of our databases and our catalog in one place. And it's where I recommend students begin their research the majority of the time. So I'm going to type in my keyword, in this case, library research, into the box and hit search. Here you'll be taken to a login screen where you want to use your KID number and password. Be sure you're using just your KID number with the lowercase k, but without the at kellogg.edu portion, and you should be able to get in just fine. There's a lot going on once you've gotten into the search results page, so I'll try to break it down here piece by piece. At the top, you'll see your keyword, so if you want to make any adjustments to what you're searching for, this is where you'll do that. In the middle, you have your search results, including a total, which in this case, at 35 million, is a lot of information to sift through, so I'd probably want to work on narrowing this down a little bit. To do that, I can either adjust my keyword at the top or go over to this left column and add some filters to my search. Like on the main library page, the filters you'll be using most frequently are also the most prominent. For example, I can limit to full text only if I wanted things I could read immediately online. I can limit to publication date, especially if that's one of the requirements for my assignment. And I could also limit to the particular source types I was looking for. So for example, if I was searching online, I might consider looking only at academic journals and ebooks. And you can see here that with just those few filters, I've gone down from 35 million results to about 9 million. Next, I want to show you how to tell apart the different types of sources within the search results list. So if I scroll down a little bit here, you might notice that in the left of this section, you get these little icons below the title, giving you a little bit more information about what type of source this is. So for example, this is a conference presentation, here we have an ebook, and here we have an academic journal. Next to that icon, if it's a source we have available, you'll see the different options you have for accessing that material. So in general, I'm looking for a link that says either HTML full text, PDF full text, full text finder, or EPUB full text. However, if you don't mind waiting a little bit, you can also utilize the request this item through interlibrary loan option to borrow that source from another library through us. There is a separate video on that feature linked in the description. If you click on the title of a source, you'll be taken to its record page. This gives you a little bit more information about the book, its author, and its publisher, along with a few options to save this source for later along the right column. So for example, if you're using either Google Drive or OneDrive to write your paper, you can also also sign into one of those accounts and send anything you're considering using for your paper directly to that very same folder. If you're going to be copy and pasting a link for the source, make sure you're coming over to the right and grabbing this permalink. That will bring up this URL here, so this is what you want to copy and paste to be able to come back to this source later. I'll also point out that we have a citation feature built right into the databases, and this will give you access to the APA, Chicago, or MLA citation for your source. This is probably something you want to take a second look at and make sure it's correct later. Again, there are separate videos on using APA, MLA, and Chicago that you can find on this channel. Because the majority of our databases also use the platform EBSCO, just like this one, once you learn the basics of the discovery service, you actually know how to use the majority of our databases as well. However, if you'd like more information on how to use a particular database or some advanced search strategies, consider checking out some of the other videos on our YouTube channel. In the meantime, thank you for watching and happy researching.